I've been shut down for a couple of days. And I've come back. I'm going to finish this quilt, this crosshatch quilt. And it's, I have three more rows here to quilt. I have this morning checked the alignment of the pat next pattern. Now, I'm not using this last row that I quilted, but I'm actually using the stitching on the quilt itself. I have the needle sit setting in on the quilt at this point right here, and you can see that this pattern is not lined up with that. But everything on the quilt is lined up. The next row, it's important that this peak, that point, be aligned with this intersection right there of the stitching on the quilt. That way, I know that when I come back and do a fill-in, clicking these points here, I know that they're going to be as closely aligned as I can make them. So I don't really need this row. All I need to do now is make sure that my spacing is correct. And what I have done is measured from the bottom of this, this peak like this down one inch and placed a pin there so that I can move the machine to the, where that pin is located and check to see if that's where the pattern is. So I placed the needle right over that pin and then I check to see how well this is lined up because I have I need a one inch spacing here and I know I notice now that this is a little bit off so what I'll do is select these three rows and I will move the pattern down to match that select those three rows and I'll go here zoom in where I can see this horizontal crosshair. I will use the Alt key because it only needs a slight movement. Hold down the Alt key, press the down arrow on the three arrow pad up, down, left, right, until that... And now moving the entire pattern group down and I think that's going to work right there. So that's how easy this is to make this adjustment. I can escape to get out of those. Well, really, I need those again. I want to see how much. It says here I have 22.81 inches of pattern left. So I'll measure with a tape measure from where the needle is located because that's the top of the next row down to C and I have 22 and a little bit about 22 and 5 eighths inches of quilt remaining so that's fairly close right there. Okay, I brought up my calculator, which I have down here on my task bar, and I divided um, 5 eighths, I divided by 5 by 8 and I get 0.625 and you can see I have 22.81 and that's that's so close that I'm not going to bother with it at this time to make an adjustment so I don't need to do that. Okay again I have quilted a row and I've repositioned this 
bottom edge of the last row that I stitched. I positioned it so that it lines up with the bottom edge of the uh, quilt after I rolled it. Then I again I measured down one inch and I made sure that the top edge of the next row to stitch lines up with where I marked that one inch below this area here. So I keep repeating this because this is, to me is very important. Next thing I'm going to do is use the uh, position on the quilt itself of these, this point like this. I'll do that on each side. I'll use this point and either this or this point and make sure that this peak is directly below that point on the quilt not this not this on the screen this doesn't matter anymore so I'll do that adjustment here you can see why I say that I don't go by what is on the screen on this last row I quilted because the needle is actually sitting at that intersection right there and I want this peak of the next row to be right under that. So that means I'm going to have to select these two rows. I'll just move them both at the same time. I'll select that, get my, change my anchors, and I'm going to adjust this so that this peak and this intersection are where the crosshairs are. So I'll just do that adjustment right there. A little touchy. Okay, I think that'll work right there. But you, you know, see it doesn't line up with this, and that's what why I say this doesn't matter anymore. What matters is the point on the quilt. So I'll check the left side. Okay, again, I'm going to move this pattern to where the vertical crosshair is because that's how I have it set, the needle set in the position. So I'll do that just like that. Next, next I will draw my boundary you can see on this side of the quilt I now have a problem because I don't have enough pattern to fill this space. Here's what I did to the row above. I needed a fill area here to take up that space. I, this last repeat, it's adjusted the way that, that the size it needs to be so I selected it I did a copy. I went over here and did a paste. Then I just lined all of this up. I got it positioned as close as possible. Then I went back and checked it to see how it was lined up. You can see it's a little bit off, and I can use the alt and the right arrow to bring it over a little bit and bring it down. Right there looks good. I'll make sure by getting my end anchors and having end snap turned on, I'll make sure that it is snapped right there to that point and it looks like it's okay so that's what I had to do well you say what are you going to do with all this stuff I'm going to right click do a fill inside and there I have it I've taken care of that blank space 
I will do the same thing down here. Now you say, oh, okay, that's out of order. So I go back, click here to select that, repeat, right click, do an order join. And there it is, it's order joined. Now it says start, next, and end down there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and be able to stitch this out. Toggle this as sewn so you can see. Yep, there's the end point right there. So that's how it's going to work. Okay, I am down to this very last row. You can see by my boundary the bottom edge is not perfectly straight but I have my one inch gap in here to fill in after I quilt this row so what I'm going to do is select this entire row do a fill inside and that will take care of all of this along the bottom edge it won't have a gap of unquilted area along the bottom if I would have pushed this up so that there wasn't any uh, part of the pattern hanging down below the boundary. We're at the end of this project and this worked out very well by doing the fill inside here and I've quilted, I filled, filled in this gap between the two rows and I hope that maybe that this will help some of you that think about doing cross hatching and you can see by this that it is complicated to keep everything lined up so I hope this helps you